Oh, he's great. He's doing a fantastic job. He's totally transformed, I think. You know, I mean, I, I didn't... I knew... I didn't... I'd met Heath once before in L.A., and um, he's a really sweet guy. He's just a cool guy, and and uh, he's, he's totally taken Ned and made him his own and made him... He looks like Ned, you know, I mean, he looks... He looks so like Ned, and he's found all these subtle nuances to, to, to the character, and he's making him play very interestingly. When you were in um, Ned Kelly, I was, I think, the most jealous I have been of anyone ever. Orlando Bloom, I for know. me, was it. For me, know. too. And obviously Heath Ledger, like, for you, as a, as a young girl, like, going onto set, were you just like... Oh, I was just, like, a... Spats. Like I was just <laughs> kind of like Hoo! the whole time. I was so excited. Orlando Bloom I had like one scene with and I just the whole time was just like <laughs> so was just so dreamy. Just because it feels important to mention it. Heath was just like the kindest, coolest, like weirdest in the best possible way. Like just so was not like a Hollywood kind of yeah so reluctant to like take on that like heartthrob. He was just like such a good dude. How would you like if somebody fucked up your last walk? You're like a goddamn woman. I mean, You're like your this mom. moment is so intense. Did you stay in character throughout filming or did you turn it on and turn it off? I did not stay in character all the time. That really? would have been pretty hard on a person. But uh, that scene right there, I was really hitting Heath. Mm. I mean, and he asked me to. I said, now listen, I'm, you know, a little more of a veteran than you. I said, when I was a young actor, I used to ask people to hit me, it hurts. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'll do it if you want me to. And, and I'm not going to hold back. Yeah. And he said, please. Wow. He, he said he needed it. And I, I was hitting him pretty hard. Hi. Hey, Julia. Mm -hmm. Is it true that you were the one who suggested that Heath Ledger seeing Can't Take My Eyes Off of You in the football scene and 10 Things I Hate About You? And what is your favorite memory of that day? Yes. And uh, my favorite memory of that day, I mean. That was your idea. No, it was definitely not. Oh, it was idea. not your idea. <laughs> oh, OK. Um, oh, that's wish. funny. Yeah, OK. No, no, well, that's no. a good rumor. Is it a rumor? I didn't even I don't know. know. Yeah. Uh, cool. I'll take credit for it. Yeah. Um, uh, my favorite memory of that day, the whole day, he was just phenomenal. I mean, like, running up and down those stadium steps. And nobody knew that he had this amazing voice, and he just went full out, and I got to watch it. It's such a great moment. Mm. Yeah. I think we had been cast for our essences without really understanding what our essences were. And that's outside of sexuality. I mean, we're like two straight guys cast in these roles. But who we, who we are, who we were, Aang could see. And I don't know if I could. Mm. So when the movie had the response that it had, I think... All of us who had been cast, that includes every actor, but the main actors of Heath and me and Anne Hathaway and Michelle Williams, like, I think, I don't think we recognized what Aang had seen in us. So we're sort of wandering around blind at the profundity and the, the echo that the movie made. We understood the power of the story, but I think playing a character in it, we didn't fully. Yeah. And I don't think we ever had any idea it would have the impact that it had. You going to do this again next summer? Well, maybe not. Like I said, me and I was getting married in November. So, uh, we're trying to get something on the ranch, I guess. You? I might go up to my daddy's place and give him a hand through the winter. I might be back. The army don't get me. I enjoy rehearsals, and I believe that writing should should hold up to the rehearsal process. And I think you learn a lot in the rehearsal process too. You also just mostly break through all of, you know, I mean, there's some moments where it's nice to just meet somebody and go. But I find if you're gonna get to a place where you really wanna land with someone and you wanna be present with them, it's very good, particularly in emotional things and stuff like that, you need to at least spend enough time with them that all that Forgive me for, but like all the bullshit of like uh, small talk goes away, mm. and then you can get to it. When I say all we have is broke down, I can't quit you. You know that those lines. Tell you what, we could have had a good life together, fucking real good life, had us a place of our own. But you didn't want it, Ennis. So what we got now is broke back mountain. 
Everything's built on that. That's all we got, boy. Fucking all. So I hope you know that if you don't never know the rest. You count the damn few times that we have been together in nearly 20 years, and you measure the short fucking leash you keep me on, and then you ask me about Mexico, and you tell me you kill me for needing something I don't hardly never get. You have no idea how bad it gets. And I'm not you. I can't make it on a couple of high-altitude fucks once or twice a year. You are too much for me, ass. You son of a horse and bitch. I wish I knew how to quit you. We had rehearsed it. We had gone earlier, uh, months earlier, uh, when it was still snowing there. And I remember it was about covered in two or three feet of snow. We didn't even see what the ground looked like. And at the time, I had my dog, who's now passed away, jumping through the snow, I remember. And then the spring came, and everything melted and we shot the scene and there was a like a palpable feeling of of that scene while we were doing it to make a movie that's that even just works is a miracle <laughs> and when it resonates even beyond that it's it's impossible and it has nothing to do with you in the end and the BAFTA is presented to Jake Gyllenhaal. Uh, uh, who thought that this would happen? Um, to the George twins. Um, uh, to all the nominees, uh, this is, uh, I'm, I'm just flattered to be in your, your company. Uh, <clears throat> I kind of wanted to go, hey, but, <laughs> hey, hey. Yeah, yeah, Jamie will love that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> thank you so much uh, to Aang, to Heath, to Michelle, to James. Um, to uh, Larry and Diana for writing this incredible story, uh, to Annie Proulx for writing this too. <laughs> it's almost all three of theirs. Uh, this movie uh, means even more to me socially than it does artistically. <laughs> the stunning success of Brokeback Mountain, in which she acted opposite the late Heath Ledger, catapulted her to a new level of success and earned her an Oscar nomination. What was making Brokeback Mountain like? Well, that was happy. That was happy at work. For a reason we both understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You fell in love on that movie. I did. I did. Maybe that's the secret. That off-screen love affair with Ledger only deepened the drama on screen. Who could forget moments like this? I remember that day. Tell me. I remember me. that day really well. I remember standing in the hallway and thinking, water, water. I want to be like water, strong enough to hold up a ship, but able to slip through your fingers. It's, it's unforgettable. Yeah, for me too. <laughs> for me too. Thankfully, I hope not to forget it. You have worked with some of the best actors in the world. How would you rate Heath's talent? It was quite extraordinary, wasn't it? Oh, well, he's, he's got to be right up there. I think, I'm not sure whether I'm accurate about this, but somebody told me that Michael Caine, who's uh, a very experienced bloke, said that one of Heath's recent performances, he could be the Joker, uh, is one of the greatest performances he's ever seen on screen. Well, that ain't bad. And although you say it, it's, it's not comic book characters, one of the nice things for us as an audience is there are comic moments, and that's mostly with you, isn't it? There's a lot of com comic moments for me, but the surprise is, is with Heath, Heath Ledger, who plays this uh, homicidal, psychopathic murderer. And he, is, he gets a lot of humour out of his, his part. One of the funniest things he did for me was... He, he, he plays his nutcase with this funny makeup, this weird makeup, and then he sees Maggie Gyllenhaal, and it's, it's like, 
this beautiful woman and he has this very long hair and he goes ah beautiful woman and he brushes his hair back as a masculine gesture but it's very feminine it's quite weird and it gets a laugh it's it's very funny but it's so unexpected and he gets quite a few laughs uh, of considering he's playing to my mind one of the greatest villains in 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 movie history i'm talking about movie, not batman movie history he's straight up there with with tony hopkins and Han hannibal lecter or with, with jack with the original joker that nicholson and of course you can see that now on, on the on, on the big screen but i wonder of course you wouldn't have had that many scenes with them but on set did you look and think oh, boy, that's is, is, how's he playing this yeah i I, don't, I never have a scene directly with him but it, what he does do in the movie uh, batman and i are giving a party and he gate crashes it so I was in the scene, but not, you know, I had different dialogue with other people, but not with him. He never ever spoke to me in, in, in the scene. But I was on the set with him for three days, you know, and I got to know him. But what surprised me was I was on the set with him talking to him before he did the first take that I ever saw. And, and I didn't know what was coming. And so what happens is the, he gets in the elevator, goes down, and then the elevator comes up and he bursts into our party which is the first time I ever saw the Joker as such. And I thought it was stunning right from then. I mean, uh, um, I, I praise him to high heaven all over the place. I think he's going to get an Oscar nomination, probably uh, uh, get the Oscar. But this is not based on him dying or anything like that. I, I, I was saying this, and so were the unit from the first day. The, not, it wasn't his first day, my first day with him. I mean, I, I don't know him very well. I just had sort of on the set chats for two days. I'd never met him before, but he was a lovely, but a guy, a very, very quiet. Um, uh, I, I enjoyed very much actually our very first scene uh, together um, in uh, in that interrogation room, as I'd said, you know, because it was the first time I got to see, you know, what Heath was uh, really going to do, and enjoyed it very much, you know. I mean, despite the rage and everything that uh, um, you know Batman was uh, displaying in that scene. Um, I actually, in between takes, I, I was I was laughing uh, my head off because I was liking how much um, it seemed to be working um, between us. And Heath also, you could see how much glee and delight he got from playing this character. You know, he, he really got satisfaction out of it. We've never wanted any kind of nudge, nudge, wink, wink concession to the audience. It's you stay under, you stay in character, you believe the character uh, throughout. And Heath did an impeccable job with that. He immersed himself completely into it. It was a real joy working opposite him. And see it, you know, when, once he was in his makeup, he was the Joker the whole way through. Once he took it off, he was Heath, you know, and he was great company. But when he was in it, he stayed in it. Director Christopher Nolan soon found himself the toast of Hollywood for delivering such a smash hit. However, he was quick to attribute the record box office result to the appeal of the film's cast. You know, the excitement surrounding his very, very unique, fresh portrayal of the Joker was always for us going to be an absolute linchpin of getting people excited to come and see uh, the continuation of our story. He's the big fresh element in it, along with Aaron Eckhart playing Harvey Dent, Harvey Two-Face. Uh, so yeah, I think, I think the early word on how great his performance is has undoubtedly helped. What was Heath Ledger like to work with? Fantastic. Speaking of makeup, when we first got there, uh, I guess we rehearsed in England, in London, and so Heath and I um, were in the same trailer coming up with our looks, you know? So I would be working on Two-Face over here and Heath would be on the other side of the trailer with his makeup man and they would be, you know, Heath would be going, Arr! making noises from the other side of the room, you know, Arr! 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 like this. And, and I would look over and he's making, a, he's coming up with his makeup, um, which I thought was real special, you know, and then we would talk about it and that sort of thing. Um, wow. Just a really great guy. My one experience with Heath um, on the film was our scene together in the hospital bed, which is really my only scene with him. And it was, um, I was in the hospital bed that day and I thought, well, I don't really have any lines. What am I gonna do? And I had no idea what was gonna happen. And so I was, got in the bed and they were lighting and Chris was walking around and doing things. And then Heath came around and Heath was always in character. So he would come around and, you know, be talking to himself in the corner, <laughs> like this. And then he would come up, I was laying there and I was watching him the whole time. And he came up and would walk around me like this. 
And I would watch him and I would watch him. He'd walk around the hospital bed like this. I'd watch him. Didn't say anything for maybe an hour. He would walk around. <laughs> and then we'd watch him and then he'd start saying his lines. And I would watch him, boom, watch him come around the bed like this. And then all of a sudden my hand <laughs> would go up like this. And he cap caught my hand. So we just went through this organic process of developing this scene, which was really nothing. And then when we came time to shoot, we had this thing beautifully choreographed. And, you know, he did. We never said a word to each other. Wow. Yeah. And then it was a long day. And we walked out um, to our back to our trailers. And Heath was here. And I was walking. And he puts his hand on my shoulder. And he goes, that's what acting's all about. Ledger performance is unbelievable. Unbelievable. And I still haven't even seen, frankly, beginning the whole thing. Sat down and watched the whole thing. I've seen it in pieces. But, man. It's extraordinary. I think what he did was really spectacular. And um, I think even for the, the greatest actors, it's unusual that you can hit a stride where you're so free. And um, I think that it was inspiring watching him do that. And I think it's incredibly difficult to do that in a movie that's this big. First, uh, from the five, first five minutes with him, you knew that he had found, he had tuned into some frequency or he was doing something with it that was very, very special. And between takes and between, he, he was a sweet guy. And we talked about a lot of sorts of things. He, he turned up on time, he knew the lines, completely committed, focused on the work. Um, so, and what, a, you know, if you're going to leave, then I think, you know, be proud, leave, you know, leave with this. to remember Heath in that moment. Wonderful to see Heath Ledger there. Um, the final chapter of The Dark Knight has been written. You're about to see new, never before seen footage from The Dark Knight Rises. The epic conclusion to our trilogy. I'm sorry, Oprah, I, something I, I hope you don't mind if I, if I, if I, speak about this but there's something i i feel very unsettled um at the moment and and i suppose it's because uh i only just saw the the news about heath ledger's death and um oh, yes it just seems that it seems somehow strange to be talking about anything else uh not that there's anything to say really except to express one's regret and and yes. to yes. Uh, and to say from the bottom of one's heart uh, um to, to to his family and to his friends that uh, that I'm, I'm sorry for their trouble. I didn't know him. Uh, I have an impression, a strong impression. I would have liked him very much as a man if I, if I had. I'd already marvelled at some of his work and had looked forward so much to seeing the work that he would do in the future. So, I'm very very proud of this. Thank you so much for giving it to me, and I'm. I'm very proud to be included uh, in that group of, of, of wonderful actors this year. Um, you know, for, for as long as I can remember, <clears throat> uh, the thing that gave me a sense of, of wonderment, of, of renewal, um, the thing that teased me with the question, uh, how is such a thing possible, and then dare you go back into the arena one more time with, with, with longing and, and self-doubt jostling in the balance it, it's always been the work of other actors um, and um, there are many actors in this room tonight including my fellow nominees who, who, who've given me that, that sense of regeneration and um, Uh, Heath Ledger gave it to me. Um, um, 
in, in, in Monsters Ball, uh, that character that, that, that he created it seemed to be almost like an unformed being, uh, retreating from themselves, retreating from his father, from his life, even retreating from us, and yet we wanted to follow him, and yet were scared to follow him almost. It was unique, and, and then, of course, in Brokeback Mountain, he was unique, he was perfect. Um, <laughs> and that, that scene in the trailer at the end of the film is as moving as anything that I think I've ever seen. Um, and I'd like to dedicate this to Heath Ledger. So thank you very much. Thank you. As uh, most of you probably know by now, and some of you may not know, uh, Heath Ledger was found dead a few hours ago, uh, yesterday, as you're seeing this, yesterday. Heath Ledger was an amazing, amazing, talented young man, 28 years old. He was a friend, um, and we will miss him, and uh, we want to leave you with the last time he was on our show. We're back with Heath Ledger, and uh, we're, we're here, we're going to ride in a bobsled. Uh, and uh, you'll see we're about to go down the mountain. Here we go. We're going down. Oh. Hold on. Really, really tight. Whoa. Wow, this is really, really fun. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Erica Leiblock on Facebook. What was your favorite experience working with Heath Ledger? Heath, you know, it's actually, we just celebrated the 20th anniversary of, uh, of that movie. Uh, the, the movie I was in, Heath, was called 10 Things I Hate About You. Heath had really good taste in music. So he was the first time I ever heard one of my now favorite bands and has been my favorite band, one of my favorite bands for many years, Radiohead. First time I ever heard Radiohead was driving in the back of Heath's car. OK Computer. He had a CD of it. A hell of an actor. Brilliant. Yeah, brilliant actor. Let's talk about Heath Ledger's Joker. What an unbelievable villain. You say that you knew early on that oh, he was that great. Yeah, from the really f the first rehearsal I had with him, um, I called a friend in California and they said, uh, uh, we were shooting in London and I, I, I called home and they said, uh, you know, how's it going and what's Heath like? And I said, it's, it's really special. Um, I think the actors, you know, if they're lucky, they do sort of consistently good work. Um, and I liken it to, it's, it's like you're flying at sort of subsonic speed. And then occasionally an actor will go through the sound barrier. And, and Heath has really tapped into something here. Um, he's sort of, he's just tuned into a sort of a station we can't hear. Yeah. You know, it's very, it's very special work, and uh, I know I know that there's a lot of hype about it, but it, but it really lives up to it. I mean, it is an Oscar-worthy performance, and it would not surprise me if he doesn't get a, a, a posthumous Oscar. On set, there was lots of ad-libbing, lots of humour, particularly from Heath. Is, is that true? What was he like to work with? Oh, he was just playing. That was the great thing with Heath. He just bounced there the minute the camera started rolling. He was up and fired. He was... No, we just had a great time because he... I don't normally allow much ad-libbing, but he was just so good at it. He, he knew that character, and every take he would come up with something different and surprising, which makes the whole process of making a film much more fun, because it's normally quite boring, just, you know, you've planned it for a year, and now you're doing exactly what you want, 
I, I was enjoying the fact that it was surprising every day and Heath was leading the pack because he got Andrew Garfield ad-libbing as well because Andrew had never ad-libbed before. Suddenly, everybody was adding their own little bits to my film. <laughs> Terry jokes that he co-directed the film and, you know, he really... He did. He did. Like, he, from, he was about to direct his own movie and he came in not just as an actor concerned with his own part, but he was concerned with the whole process and whether it was ad-libbing the, his own dialogue or putting, you know, suggesting sequences or changing things around, or why don't we do it like this? Like, he was just always on the ball and energetic and, and, and generous and just wanted to, you know, make the best work he could. He was a good influence on everyone else. Oh, he was great. He just, he, he, he kept everybody going. You'd come in the morning, I, I hate shooting because you have to get up early. Heath would arrive, boom, hey, let's go to work, woof. And he would lift everybody, and every day was like that. So, uh, yeah, we got through an incredible amount in the first month. Uh, uh, luckily, we got through enough. Uh, with Heath while he was still alive to actually be able to finish the film. Heath is such a, a giving actor, meaning, you know, when he's not on camera and he's doing a scene with you, he's very giving in that he's still acting and it lets you, you know, be your character and concentrate on your character. It makes it easier. Um, extraordinary. Yeah, extraordinary. Um, full of life, a lust for life and energy, um, which was contagious. Um, infectious in a really good way and uh, inspiring to everyone that he kind of, well, I mean, look at the reaction, look at the insane reaction after he was snatched away. Um, it, 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 like, you, like people that never met him, people that he touched through his work, people that he touched because of how, because of friendships, because of whatever, like he, he was just a, it was a force of nature and uh, to be to be in the presence of that, and to I, f I think I can speak for us both and say that we feel really lucky to have met him and to have been in a creative situation with him. Yes, of course. Um, he did such amazing work that um, there's a responsibility for any actor to to play the next villain in in a Batman franchise, uh, obviously. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I thought I thought about that personally, but then also at the same time, I have a job to do, and, and uh, I'm just really grateful to be part of the the team and the family. So, um, so it's more inspirational, really, that uh, that, I, that I follow after Heath, and um, and uh, just to have the opportunity at all, I'm just very grateful. I know one thing we didn't talk about was Heath Ledger. Yeah. Pressure. Did you watch his performance before going into it? What know, did you this do? This is Heath Ledger gave one of the best performances, one of the most beautiful performances, not just of any villain, but in my opinion, ever in the history of cinema. He was so incredible, and out of respect to him and to Jack and everybody else, we knew we had to do something completely different. But what did inspire me by all those performances was the commitment that they made, how brave they were, and how they threw themselves into this role and created something so memorable. So it, there was a lot of pressure, a lot of responsibility, but very, very, very inspired and very grateful. He did some incredible work. Um, a powerful artist who contributed to our industry in such a major way. And um, I'll never forget his work and who he was, his spirit. He's left a big mark on me. and so many of my friends that um, we all hung out together with and it's so sad um, that he didn't reach his full potential I mean he did he did so much but there was his life was just too short um, he's got a beautiful daughter um, and um, his family he's, he's left a fantastic legacy it's all right they're the brothers Grimm people talk about them in Marsburg they're famous right you are son the famous brothers Grimm Look at this strapping young lad. He is my daughter. And a fine wife he'll make some lucky man. You worked with um, Heath Ledger, was that good? It was great, it was great. I'm not being hyperbolic at all by saying this, but he's the best actor I ever worked with. Seriously? Seriously. Yeah, um, you know, he, he, you know, I don't know what to say about that. Um, it's just terrible and, uh, and it's not something that, that, that I'll ever get over, nor, nor do I think anybody who knew him uh, you know, could ever get over. He's a really, really special guy. And I think to people who knew him, it just felt like his light was just too bright for this place. You know. Think about the fervor 
that surrounded Brokeback Mountain when it was released 11 years ago. Heath, Aang, and I were at the center of a storm that year, fielding the praise and controversy that came from telling a love story about two men. Standing here tonight, I can't help but think about Heath and how much he would have loved to witness all of this incredible change that has been affected in the LGBT community in the intervening years. He would be proud to know that he had somehow played a small part in all of it. I know that I am. And even though Brokeback was very much a, a movie of its moment in history, Aang made sure that it would stand the test of time. He kept it simple and quiet, with respect for the characters and their corner of the world. He knew that to tell a big story, you have to keep it small. We don't always need to speak in order to communicate, and it's a lesson that rings in my ears often. I, uh, I remember the day we shot our big love scene. Um, when we, we finished the scene, we, both Heath and I, we got up and we looked over to see a huge smile on Aang's face. And um, I was surprised, because although, you know, though you might not know it, Aang has a really great sense of humor. Um, you know, he, he rarely smiled on set. But this was a shit-eating grin. <laughs> um, and so naturally I walked up to Aang and I was excited to see any sort of emotion cross his face. <clears throat> and uh, <laughs> eagerly I asked, I was like, how, what, how was that? How was that? You know, you, know, he, you, you liked the scene? And, and he just was nodding in a really awkward way. And, <laughs> He just said, so gay. <laughs> um, uh, that was the first of many times that he would say that. But what <laughs> it is a beautiful, beautiful story. It's a gorgeous script, and uh, God, Jake's cute. Um, <laughs> So I'm, I, I'm... And the actor goes to Joaquin Phoenix. A five-time nominee, Joaquin Phoenix is celebrating his first win. He was previously nominated in this category for his performance in Walk the Line. Um, I was here many years ago, and um, I couldn't fully appreciate it at, at the time. Um, I, I now realize how fortunate I am to be a part of this community, have such reverence for actors and, and what we do. I so feel really honored to be here. Um, I'd like to just talk about a little bit about my fellow nominees, if that's okay. Uh, uh, really, I'm standing here on the, the shoulders um, of my favorite actor, uh, Heath Ledger. So thank you and good night. A friendship can't really be explained in a soundbite, nor can it in a three-minute interview. Um, and those who can do it, I find sort of odd. Um, I happen to not be one of those people. But I think that, uh, you know, I think... You know, Heath meant a lot to a lot of people, the people who are fans and the people who saw his work and were moved by his work and the people who knew him as a person. And, um, you know, he's just an incredible force and is still missed.